thinking of something that is relevant for the time in which we live when the thoughts of people around the world are on this coronavirus that is spread all over i thought of looking at the three temptations of jesus in matthew chapter 4 and see how they apply to us for this time so if you'll turn with me to matthew chapter 4 may we read that jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by satan it's interesting to see that although temptation is from satan trials can be from satan is the holy spirit who led jesus and that must be with a purpose and that's exactly the same with us the first thing we need to remember that any trial or temptation that we face remember if you're walking in the will of god the holy spirit is the one who's led you there of course if you disobey the holy spirit you can land yourself in temptations that god never intended you to face and that's why we pray in the lord's prayer lead us not into trial that's too much for us lead us not into temptation so if we are seeking to do god's will to the best of our ability the holy spirit will still lead us through trials and it's very interesting to see the parallel passage to this in luke chapter 4 chapter of luke 4 1 jesus was led by the spirit in the wilderness and then he was tempted for 40 days and at the end of the temptation it says in luke 4 14 he returned to galilee in the power of the spirit led by the spirit tempted by the devil returns in the power of the spirit that's a good line for us to remember is the holy spirit who allows us to face trials even at this time god is in control of this world and uh, when we pray our father who art in heaven we are acknowledging there's one up above who is our father who loves us and who is also running the universe so that we must always remember <clears throat> he will not allow us 1 corinthians 10:13 ever ever to be tested beyond our ability <clears throat> for many of you there may not be a severe test in terms of money or food or things like that but i think of many poor brothers in cfc churches in the villages in india who are tested even in that area in terms of food and finances when when there is no work they don't earn and uh, food is not always readily available but i believe in their case also they are children of god god will not allow any one of them to be tested beyond their ability but god will make a way of escape it's a wonderful thing to believe that in whichever country we live in whichever time of history we live in whatever pandemic or tsunami or any other problems earthquakes or famines whatever may come our father who loves us still runs this universe and he'll never forsake us so <clears throat> uh, if jesus was tempted and tested so we also have to be because he's our forerunner and in times like this is good to remember that that the holy spirit will be with us as he was with jesus in throughout that temptation and then we read after he fasted for 40 days he was hungry so jesus obeyed god 100% in everything and yet he was hungry is it possible for a person who's obeying god 100% to be hungry sometimes to lack something to lack food here or it could be something else some other time yes so don't think that when you lack something 
earthly that you need, you're out of the will of God. No, Jesus lacked food at this time, but he was not out of the will of God. He was in the center of God's perfect will. It was a trial. And when you, God allows you to go through some situation where you lack something, just see it as a trial. Jesus has gone ahead of you and he will be with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. So as we look at these temptations, in each of these three temptations, we see two temptations. So the first one, he was hungry and uh, the test was one of survival. Isn't that what a lot of people are thinking of today? So many people are dying around us. Survival. How shall we survive in this time? Well, Jesus faced that temptation also. And when the devil came to him and said, hey, turn these stones into bread and you can survive. Jesus replied in Matthew 4.4, 4, man does not live on bread alone. We don't survive merely by having our physical needs met. Very important to understand at this time. We don't survive merely by being healed and protected from disease and sickness. That's not survival. The fact that when this pandemic is over, to have come through it without getting sick or dying, is that survival? No. Survival is if we have lived in faith and at rest throughout this period. Then we have survived. Otherwise, we have sort of struggled and scraped our way through. I don't want to struggle and scrape my way through this trial. I want to survive in triumph. I want to be more than a conqueror by the time this trial is over. And the only way to do that is to listen to what Jesus said. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Proceeds is present continuous tense not past tense. The Bible is God's word that proceeded from God's mouth through many servants of his thousands of years ago. But there's a word that proceeds from God's mouth. As we read the Bible, it must come from God to us. You know, faith does not come by the word of God. And if you read carefully, uh, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So it's, don't jump that hearing part and go straight to faith comes by the word of Christ. No. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. In other words, when I take the word of Christ, which is the New Testament, particularly, I must hear in that. Otherwise, I don't get faith. So man is to live by faith. We're called to live by faith, and that faith comes through hearing the word of God Every day, all the time, continuously. So <clears throat> here was a temptation from the devil to Jesus to move when he had not heard a word from the Lord, to move ahead of God's time. And Jesus said, no, I've not heard a word from my father to turn stones to bread or to make bread in this way. No, and I will not move. Even if I'm hungry, I will not move. I'll move in obedience to the Father. There was another time when bread was needed, when 5,000 people were hungry. Yeah, then he heard the Father and he obeyed. So let me turn you to a verse in Isaiah chapter 50, which tells us how Jesus lived. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. In the middle of that verse, it says, Whenever Jesus woke up in the morning, he, this is how he responded to that waking up. My father has woken me up. He wakens me morning by morning. And he wakens my ear to listen. That's a good way for all of us to wake up every morning. Or even if you wake up in the middle of the night. To say, my father woke me up now. And he's got something to say to me. And I want my inner ear to be alert, to listen. To listen as a disciple, it says here, Isaiah 50 verse 4. That means to listen in order to obey what he told me. Not just to listen to accumulate knowledge, not just to listen so that I can preach next week on what I heard today, 
what I studied in the Bible, all that is seeking honor. But to listen as a disciple, a lot of preachers read the Bible to get something to preach. In my younger days, I did that. But as I grew up, I realized that's not the main thing. I must listen as a disciple. It's for me to do something, to obey God, that God speaks to me. Remember that. And then from all that he speaks to you, he may give you something to share with others too. But it would have been written in your life first, then you would speak it, then you won't be a hypocrite. But if you only listen in order to preach to others or share with others, you'll end up as a hypocrite. I'll tell you that. Or to get honor for yourself. So he wakens me morning by morning to listen. And I want to give you the example of someone else in the Old Testament, in the book of Job, in chapter 23, it was not only Jesus who esteemed God's word <clears throat> more than food. You know, when you're hungry for, after 40 days of fasting, to say, I still want God's word, not food, is really something. Now, Job said in chapter 23 of Job, in verse 12, I have treasured the words of God's mouth more than my necessary food. More than my necessary food. It's quite a word. And remember, Job didn't have a Bible. No, he, the book of Job is the first book of the Bible written. So he lived 500 years before Moses wrote Genesis. So this is the first book of the Bible written, and he didn't have any Bible. So what does he mean by, a, I've treasured the words of his mouth? Where did he hear the words of God's mouth? His inner ear was open. And probably he heard with the ear also, God may have spoken to him like he spoke to Abraham. But certainly his inner ear was open to hear what God had to say. And his attitude was, that's more important to me than my necessary food. He had that attitude day after day after day. That's why God said to Satan, there's no one like Job on the face of the earth. You know, God can say that about you and me also. If you have that same attitude every day, he wakens me up to listen. And I've esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. God's word is more important to me than my breakfast this morning. God's word is more important to me than the food I eat today. I'll tell you something. If you have that attitude, you can be pretty sure that when Satan comes and tries you like he tried Job, you'll come out as an overcomer. And it says, God bless Job double at the end, and he'll bless you double too. But that's because of that attitude. It's that attitude that helped him to be an overcomer when he saw all his property gone, all his children dead. So that's the first thing in these days that we need to recognize that I must move, I must listen to God all the time. He wakens me morning by morning, not just to read the Bible for 15 minutes, but to have a listening ear all the time, like these police officers have in their police cars, uh, a phone or a walkie-talkie, a phone, I think, that connects to their headquarters, and all the time it's on. You can't turn it off anytime. I believe we, every Christian should have that attitude, and that's possible because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And if I take that attitude, Lord, I want to listen to your word all the time, then we will be overcomers because God's word helps us to overcome.